reference and hold on your questions because I don't think I can finish everything in 45 minutes. <laughs> so hold them on towards the end. Um, my name is Hemant Mahavar. I'm a program manager in PowerShell and I'm learning how to play with DS, uh, nano servers now. Um, how many of you have played with nano server? Okay, very few. I'm yeah. hoping the same is over there. Uh, but most of you have heard about nano servers. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing this session in, uh, instead of Jeffrey, you get a smarter looking and younger person, but not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the benefit. I even went and put on those He, he wears them to work, I don't, so I, I use them. <laughs> okay, um, and if we have time after the session, I can actually show you which one is nano server, how it looks. I don't think I have time now. So the idea is basically, um, what is nano server, why we are doing nano server, what it gives you, and the bottom line is, start getting ready for it by doing remote management. With PowerShell remoting, WMI, you guys are already doing it, but just do double down on there. Anytime you install, go to demo desktop, it's like, I'm doing something wrong. Don't do that, because you will not be able to do that with nano servers. <coughs> okay. So the reason we have nano server um, initiative all along is there are a couple of things. People, whenever they have to do reboots, not a good thing. Why do they have to do reboots? Because they have to pass something. Half the time they don't know why they are patching or applying that patch. That's not the main area that they are working on, but the system has so much crud that patches are applicable to that system. You patch it, you have to reboot it. When you reboot it, it takes a longer time. When a patch gets applied, you don't know how long it's going to take. So there are all those things and you don't want to get into those things. That's one. Second is when you start doing things at scale, you have images, you have to copy them over one place to another, or you want to spin up a lot of VM, you have a big size. And that big size of Windows Server contains every role that you are not using. If you just want to have a Hyper-V server, you have bits there for AD and I don't know, God knows what all. So there are so many things. So you want that size to be smaller. Given you have smaller size, it's easy. You can carry it in on a USB, a 16 megabyte USB. Not megabyte, gigabyte. <laughs> megabyte. <laughs> Um, and then um, the more uh, resources the infrastructure is consuming, that means the less is left for the guest OS. If you are doing Hyper-V, you have your OS is taking a lot of those things. Yes, you can put more RAM and more hard drive, but why? And when you put more RAM and more hard drive, you rather let the guest OS take care of it or use it rather than the host that you're trying to run. And obviously security, everybody is aware of all those hacks and stuff happening and those are because they are holes and like oh i don't know what all things i'm doing on my box because i'm a sql server admin there are other pieces there and those get hacked so those are the couple of five four or five level uh, components and essentially what people want is just enough server i need to do this and i want my server to do only this i don't care about everything else and that's the model um, and Jeffrey talked about this slide, he has already showed you guys, so I'll just go through quickly. We had a uh, Windows Server, which was basically take a desktop, put it sideways, it's a server. Uh, mm -hmm. That's how we started. Uh, and then in 2008, we start signaling, hey, server business is important, we want people to move away, and we created this notion of server core. That was two separate installs, you are either server core or full server. And then people were like, nah, it's too difficult, I can't do it, and we said, okay, sure will let you go from server core all the way to the full server and in between will give you a minimum server. So we tried a couple of times encouraging people to go that model. Mm, didn't work that well. So we said, okay, you know, enough. We are going to go and give you a nano server which will have only way it manages remote. Nothing. No UI, nothing. And that's what happens. When you give people options, people say, like, yeah, I'm not ready. I, I want to use the full meal. And they're like, no, 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 you have to fast. You have to slim down. No, 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 no. So that, that's the idea here. Um, the other reason is within Microsoft, when we start using our servers, uh, our products across the board, when you look at Azure, they are doing at such a large scale. For them, the full OS doesn't cut it. It's like, I'm running as a host. 
that's it. Why do I have to worry about the entire stack? So that's there. And then obviously if they have the full stack, they have to patch it and reboot it and it takes a long time. So that was one motivation. The other one was the entire initiative of private cloud, the CPS. When you look at it, how much v VM density it has and you have to patch it or do live migration, all those things are very, very expensive. You have the numbers here. I don't have to go into details, but those are two big factors within Microsoft. It says, hey, get it down. Azure is saying, get it down. CPS says, I can do it, but it takes so much resources. And obviously, everybody else would benefit from that. Um, so that's the nano server. It's a new headless 64-bit only deployment option. So it will not have WoW 32 in there. I don't, people still use it, I know, but that's not gonna work. Um, we have refactored everything in there and the idea is for born in the cloud applications, things which are small, fast, and needs to happen at a large scale. And if you'll see the new is you have nano server, which is a separate and their server core. And then the full server is called server with desktop experience because that's where you get the GUI. Server core doesn't have. And the idea is um, in this release of Windows Server, we are going to signal server core is going to be deprecated. So people who are on server core can move to nano server. People who never bothered to look at server core is like, okay, great. I have one less thing to worry about. I'll just jump into nano server. So that's the plan. Um, uh, the way it works is we are in nano server. It's a very small uh, footprint. Any component team which wants to come say, hey, I want to be in nano server. The answer is no, you will not be in nano server. You will be outside the nano server. You should allow people to install your component. But by default, the disk size will not have that component. DSC is one of them. So if you want DSC on nano server, it's not baked in. You have to install that packet. If you look at storage, that's another one. Hyper-V, another one. So you have all those components that you can add based on what you want, not what we give you. Um, and those are standalone, like, just like applications. And the key focus of Nano Server are three, basically the clustering scenario, Hyper-V scenario, and storage scenario. We have core CLR, that means we had to re refactor PowerShell, rewrite it all over again. We did that work. And then there's ASP.NET and PaaS v2. From a drive, driver support perspective, obviously you want, when you're running your um, nano server as the host, you want full driver support so all those peripherals can attach. So that's there. And then um, you have anti-malware also as an optional component, again, to keep the size small. And in future, we'll have system center and application inside and other uh, um, agents available on nano server so they can manage nano server and nano server can interact with them. So, that's that's a high level idea. Okay, um, nano server. I'm trying to see. Oh, let's go. So I have uh, two machines here. One of them says GB one. That's a full server, the bigger one. GB three, a <laughs> nano server, the smaller one. <laughs> um, both of those machines can run full server, nano server core. They are dual boot and all. It's it's a big. It, it looks small, but it is 16 gigabytes, 256 GBs SSD. Um, so it can run both. It's not like this hardware is specific to nano server, but I'm running those. Um, so we'll, we'll just get started with the demo part of it. You have a computer name, which is nano server on GB3. I think I have it right. Oh, I'm in a always. That's the wrong machine. That's GB1, and I have to get out of. Control C, not working. Okay, I'll run it on the normal PowerShell console. There you go. That's nano server one. And we'll just verify the machine is up and running. I hope I have network connectivity and everything working. I have a public profile. GB3 is a small server. Give me one minute. Physical size. Okay, no public profile. <laughs> now it should work. Hopefully. Everything is working. 
let's try this one. Nano DB1. Which one? one. That is a one. Yes, I think that's where the nano is. One. It's supposed to be nano. Okay. Not so good. Great news on the demo now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try. Not three, not four. That one is supposed to be full server. And if my network connections are up, at least one of them will work. Hmm. Okay, that's gone. You're on the wireless as well, aren't you? Yeah, you're connected to the wireless. Is that good? Yes, that should be fine. I have, so one machine is up and running nicely. The other one is not. So let's try a reboot and see if that works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know the last time I tested outside it was working, so something is not happening. Yep, it's live. No. Okay, back, finally, reboot is a solution. Okay, thank you. And this one is still busted, so we'll just copy paste. So here, we just check, yes, the machine is up and running. Obviously, we tested different ways. And you can enter it, so... <coughs> And this is running from a Windows 10 client connecting to a nano server. And once you go there, you have all the command lists. You can say git module, dash list available, tab commission works. You can look at the count. And on that, you have 17 modules. And we can um, exit out of it and try to run the same command on uh, Full server. Eighty. So there are, things are coming over, but uh, again, depending on what components are there, you will have that module. So those things are manageable. Um, you can call sim command lips easily. You can find things about. So let's stay on nano server and run those commands. You can find things, yes, it's a gigabyte machine and uh, it's in work group domain, work group and, uh, environment, and you can find more about the operating system. And it says, that's the code name Tuva, that means it's running nano server. Um, we talked about, yeah, I think that's one thing. Uh, let me pull up Hyper-V. So this Hyper-V is for the default machine I am on. Let's try to connect to full GB3. It's connected, no VM is running. And let's connect to nano GB1 and no VM. Again, remote management. I have turned on Hyper-V role in both of them. From your client using Hyper-V, you can go and talk to both of them. Right now, nothing is running. Um, We'll go ahead and create a bunch of machines on both nano server and full server. So I'll just take this <coughs> line of code. Essentially, I'm saying go talk to nano server, create a session, and I have a VHD, create differencing VHDs, and then create 10 VMs. So right now that number is 10, I can change it to 100, 20, 14, 7, whatever it is. So I'll just go and copy it and run it, and you'll see on And so all those things will start happening um, in Hyper-V. 
right now I'm creating 10 virtual disk from a base image and the idea is to show you you can so this is a running nano server on nano server so host is nano server guest is nano server and um, create VMs while it's running it you can come back and you'll see things start popping up same way nothing different you'll get 10 of those trust me I have a numbering system there called one two three four five um, so while that's happening it's going to finish let me copy the other script so that's one nano server and um, let's do it on the full server exit out of here and let's do on the full server and again full server this is like pristine server it's an image I've created a server out of it and nothing more there's no rows no patches nothing installed so that's the fastest server you can ever get on the full server because after you install rows you have patches things happen it gets slower so that was nano server and here is full server and the next step basically what we'll do is we'll I'll go ahead and restart both of those machines and we'll see what happens to the VM how fast those VMs comes back that essentially tells how fast the servers are booting up and depending on when where and what mode you run things there are about uh, exit remote management again you can restart those machines here you go you have command that's for all those things so there's no need even to go and reboot the machine you don't have to go to it we'll reboot we'll finish and these things will go away because machine is rebooting we'll look at the final number that shows up which is um, Right, they, yes, now they have in connectivity, it looks like they are back um, on full server, they say refresh. This one takes sometimes longer. So this has been, uh, the VMs are running about 14, 15 seconds and here they have been running for 30 seconds. Right, it's the other way around. <laughs> it's supposed to be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> the nano server is supposed to be faster. Um, yes, I don't know why. Um, the last time I ran, the two or three attempts I did, uh, it was about 15 seconds faster that nano server so nano server is running nano server full server is running full server but those 15 seconds won't matter when you actually do in production because those 15 seconds will become one minute or 30 second 40 second and that's the idea given i cannot project otherwise i'll just project and show you how fast nano server boots so that was the idea or intent of this demo that i didn't get it right um so and the other things we did is we we ran a couple of tests so we looked at all the patches that were uh, issued in 2014 and we said, oh, looking at the code which was patched, let's analyze whether it's applicable to nano server or full server or server core. So here are the numbers on what were applicable. 26 things were applicable on full server, the important bulletins or important patches, 23 for uh, server core and nine for nano server. So that means you are going to re reboot your servers if you are using nano server three times less often than the full server. That's a good thing. And if you look at the critical bulletin, so important and critical, you know, big difference. Um, out of 20, they were 23 versus two. So that's about a factor of 10. Again, that depends on what code is running, which needs to be patched. And lastly, the number of reboots for those patches that you have to install. Instead of 11 reboots, you have to do three. So less things to be patched, less often to reboot. That means your system is up and running, your environment, your services, everything is up and running faster. Um, if you look at the drivers, again, nano, this is comparison with server core only. Uh, full server has another number which we didn't reach out. Uh, number of drivers are lesser, number of services that you're running is about half, and port opens are about two and a half times lesser. So less ports, less services, less security impact. 
less threats. So again, good thing. And lastly, the resource utilization. The process, number of processes that are running, again, so server core, uh, boot IO, and the kernel memory use. Big difference. And if you look at the size of the nano server VHD, that's 450 megabytes. If you look at the size of a full server VHD, that's nine gigabytes, 20 times. If you look at server core, maybe you're lucky by five gigabytes. But again, big number, 10 times, 20 times lesser footprint. Um, from a management perspective, the idea is you never sit in front of it. Uh, configuration will eventually happen with PowerShell DSC. Remote management will happen through PowerShell and WMI both. So the UI I showed you with Hyper-V, that is using WMI. Um, if you use the command line, enter PS session, and all those things, that's pure PowerShell. And other components like Chef and other DevOps, they, they, uh, their agents will be running on Nano Server. They can, man can be managed as well. And there's a video on Nano Server uh, channel on Channel 9, which shows how Chef has written the uh, agent, refactored it to run a nano server and they can man manage and configure nano server easily. Um, again, um, so that's one thing. The other way is you can still use, if you want to use UI still, uh, server manager to remotely manage it. Uh, there is a new tool called remote RSMT, uh, which has a new look and feel and hopefully I'll be able to show you that. Um, and other MMC snappings also do work. Obviously, sometimes you have to go and open up DCOM ports. Um, that's how they work. Um, not everything has moved to D, uh, WSMAN and PowerShell. So that's there. And again, this is the data about what was the core PowerShell. So we, we refactored PowerShell. We rewrote it on top of core CLR. We call it core PowerShell. Uh, it's way, way smaller. If you look at the size of, it's about eight megabytes. Modules are two, so 10 megabytes core CLR is 45. So 55 megabytes of thing we refactored. If you look at the normal PowerShell, the SMA.dll, that is the main work, that's bigger, way bigger. Uh, we have made sure all the language elements work. I can show you one example one more time. Um, and then remoting, we made it work on that side. Um, so, and it's backward compatible with any client. So. Remoting server side is there on nano server. You can take all the way from PowerShell to client, talk to nano server easily. We added the notion of copying files over sessions now. You have from session and to session on copy item command lib, and that let you uh, copy things to nano server and copy from nano server or for that matter, any other machine. And with the debugging support, the remote script debugging, remote file editing in ISC, you can, re, you can use it to talk to that machine, bring the file up, make changes, debug them, fake good breakpoints, full experience that you get on your client or full server. Okay, so another demo on Core PowerShell. I can leave this one. And the PowerShell on Nano was again, you have um, new PS session, get PS session, invoke command, you can do all those fun stuff. That is slow to type. Okay, this time it should be faster. Create a session, nano server. I'll not bother about going there, but uh, the idea here is, here are examples, and we will share this scripts, but you can do the loops for each, you can do binary operators, and or, and this is not the best example, you, it, it'll just write 1A, 1B, 1C, it's not super exciting. Uh, you can use the full .NET APIs, tab completion is there, you can say system.io.directory, call methods, call properties there, um, you can do Pipeline, redirections, all those things are there. You have CD, ex CD XML command list examples, you can call. Uh, and then there is a, a new uh, module called PNP device. And that lets you enumerate all the devices that are connected to your machine, which one is working, which one is not. And that's, a, we made sure that we port it all the way to nano server because everything is remote. So that's um, about that. Yeah, finally decided. 
Okay, I'll leave it. Um, the next is the remote server management tool. So that remote server management tool, um, RSMT, or that you, you can install on client, but the direction we are moving is put it on the cloud. So through Abiza, through Azure, you will you can manage your remote machines easily. Um, and it includes replacement for local only tools. There are a lot of things that you couldn't do before, but now through Abiza we made sure. One of the cool examples is remote registry. You can see the registry in the web. Uh, and that's the one I'm going to uh, show. And all that work we are doing that is not nano server specific, that is driven by nano server, but that applies to full server and server core as well. So let's go to that one. So here is um, the visa portal. Um, the, the things that I'm showing you that went live for private preview. So if you're in tap program, you should be able to access all this. It's not available for public preview yet, but this is the experience. You can go to the marketplace. Um, you can go and searching. I am looking for RSMT. That's another thing when remote Windows Server connection. It gives you directions how to install the client piece, which I installed on my demo laptop. And that's how Azure and my client laptop are talking. And then all any machine that you want to manage, so it's kind of a proxy or a gateway, and any machine that you want to manage should be accessible from this laptop, and then things work. So let me jump directly into that. So is that Azure only? This is Azure only. Okay. Eventually it should come to web. I don't know when and how, so I'm not going to say anything. Uh, so here is the full GB03. Um, and the first thing it does is it tells you about what ad, what credentials you logged on as. It gives you a bit of performance, in the, uh, general information, how many network adapters you have, what is the memory count, and this was a spike when we create 10 VMs. Um, this matrix is turned off by default because it's expensive. You, have, you can turn it on. Um, you can find those information it's supposed to fill out. Here is the whether it's in work group or domain or not. Uh, how many users are there? Or if you want to add a user, sorry, that's for adding user. This is network. You have one Ethernet, which is IP address, and what's the description? Uh, all those things you can find from here. And I will see there is. Um, Oh, tools. And if you go to tools, you can find device manager. That's one thing. And it'll go and enumerate, it'll talk to this machine, this machine will talk to that machine and everything happens. Uh, most of those are the interesting ones are already pinned here, the services, registry editor. You can actually edit the registries. Currently roles and features is a getter. You can see what are there. The plan is to enable uh, the add and remove scenarios as well and you can actually launch PowerShell which is over the web <laughs> <laughs> and here you can do the full PowerShell stuff it says get command right now I'm on a full server um, so you'll have a bunch of numbers question is that PowerShell web access or something new uh, it's kind of PowerShell web access. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but the concept is the same in PowerShell web access that you have gateway and we use uh, PowerShell remoting, uh, PowerShell APIs to give you the look and feel and run those commands. Cool. So you have about 1800 commands on the box. Um, let me just show you how you add a new one. I don't know if it's gonna work given the nano server is not super happy today. Um, you find all the things here go browse all your resources. That's the new, you have remote server uh, connectors and you go and add a new one. You can use IP address or the machine name, whatever works. So <coughs> let's try nano EB03, username.
and um, you have to use a subscription and then a resource group I created one beforehand so I don't have to do all those things and I have a gateway which is set up on this demo laptop and it should say demo laptop create it <coughs> and what happens it it starts the connectivity and deploy things in arm in this case most likely it's going to fail because I cannot talk to nano server but that's the future of remote management using cloud and stuff <laughs> <laughs> okay any questions so far you have 15 minutes more uh, the idea is um, to support born in the cloud application so anything which people use uh, various languages and stuff will support those the subset of win32 APIs will be there um, you can use it in host OS guest containers whether it's Windows Server container Hyper-V containers and that's work already there in progress and in future we so this future essentially means the public builds that you have the technical preview 3 that doesn't have DSC as a component available uh, but I have them accessible inside it's working uh, package management is uh, another area where we we have refactored the code to not require you to, to install nuget.exe we have changed that underlying layer instead of calling nuget.exe we do uh, direct calls so we have created that one so the idea is you will have one get or package management not one get anymore package management to download packages from the web and use DSC to configure it those are and then PowerShell remoting as well Question. Yeah, so in regards to your remote management, uh, what are you doing to get rid of the DCOM stuff? Because DCOM is not feasible for many environments. Yes, so what are we trying to get rid of DCOM? Use PowerShell, you don't have to use, deal with DCOM, but yes, things which are there with UI, they are still there, they will fail over time. Uh, it's, it's a long battle to go and say, hey, go rewrite everything. It's like everything is working, why we should rewrite? So it's going to take time, but yes, it'll, it'll fail out. Uh, there is, um, so here is the picture about uh, refactoring. You have nano server as a base, then you have server core. The only reason you have the server with desktop experience is for remote desktop scenarios. Uh, if you want to create a remote desktop server, you need the whole look and feel. Um, as, as you start writing application, the best place is to target nano server because once you target that, you'll get everything working above. But you start from full server, there's no guarantee it's going to run on nano server because those APIs and references, all, they might not be there. So anything new, start focusing on nano server. Um, you can deploy it in any environment you want. Um, for, from a developer perspective, there is an SDK, there is integrated experience with Visual Studio. Um, you have to download it from the gallery that was released as, along with TP3. Um, so you can, and again, the experience, we, we are going to provide as first class experience as we could to normal uh, application development that you do again against the nano server as well. So you will expect that remote debugging obviously will work there. Um, reverse forwarder is a notion which I don't, I'm not fully comfortable understanding what exactly it does, but the idea, and this is where Jeffrey can talk better about these things. Um, the idea is basically if you are referencing a DLL and it's not there, there is a way for you to go and say, hey, download that DLL, reference it, as long as that DLL is not using any of the non-present APIs. So if for linking and cross-linking, this works. And using that, there were a couple of things we did which was those kind of applications that needed reverse DLL using Chef or Python or MySQL, SQLite, Java, all those things were started working on nano server and the only reason they were not working before was the missing reverse forward notion. So that's something we tested. Um, from a Windows Server 2016 perspective, you will see an installation option like server core. Currently, it's not listed in setup because 
if you want to put in setup, you need to load the drivers. So if you look in the VHDs, there's always a nano server folder. Uh, that's where the, the small WIM file is there. And there are a couple of scripts available on the web, which says, hey, I want to create a nano server as a guest OS or as a host OS. That is again, uh, um, the deployment guide has all the details. From a driver perspective, since you want to keep it minimum, you can go and pick a specific driver and use DISM to install that one, or you can use the full OEM drivers. There's a specific package which contains all of them. You can install all of them. That's what I installed on uh, the physical one. And then there's one for the VM, which is the guest drivers. You need host drivers or guest drivers, you can differentiate. So same image, you can create two VHDs. One is for the host, one is for the guest, and then use the BCD edit and boot from VHD. Voila, you have everything working. And that's how those environments were set up. So I learned a lot about BCD edit this time. <laughs> um, and then there are um, a package subfolder. That's where all those optional components that you want to install will be present. So you, there's compute that is the Hyper-V host, failover cluster, guest packages, OEM drivers, storage, and reverse forwarder. You will have DSC and anti-malware and all those things right up there. And then again, you use uh, DISM commandlet. We are working on um, porting the package manager so you can do install package and easy fun. But for the timing, that's what we have. And the other big thing is we will not support MSIs. So we uh, require Xcopy or custom PowerShell scripts. And long term plan is um, we are working on a nano server installer story, which would be different than MSI. And then it'll let you install, uninstall inventory, and online and offline stuff. So that's work in progress. The next time we talk, wherever it is, you'll have more details there. Question. Will that migrate to the other server products and clients? Or? Don't know about other servers and clients at this point. But it's work in progress. Jeffrey can tell more. I don't. I can't. Uh, and here's the details um, on. Um, Generating a VHD from Nano Server VM, there is on Technet Gallery they have a convert Windows image, and there's a command line which lets you do it. There is a deployment guide. If you go and search for um, deployment guide, you will find it. Build script has been added to the ISO, so all those utilities you need are packaged on the right. ISO. Sorry, you're right. So they were on script center. Now they are those both the scripts, the uh, convert Windows image and install Nano Server. They are part of the package. Once you download, you can just copy it over on your client and configure it. Thank you. Um, and then there's a co uh, notion of emergency management console. And I think let's try to see if I can show you that. Um, it contains very few stuff. And I might need a keyboard. But let's, it stops the recording automatically. So I have to start again. And that, here is your nano server UI, done. No more. Very smooth. And I can type. <laughs> Tell me if I'm typing the password wrong. Okay. <coughs> Administrator. Now if you can do that same trick for my password, that will be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Then, the only thing you get is up and down scroll, <laughs> log out, restart, and shut down. And this is the IP address. Those are the only things you need. Question? Could any shift in networking levels? Uh, it's not plumbed it at this point. <coughs> I don't think. Oh, there, there is. Yes. Enter. Done. <laughs> you can go all the way to the networking stack. I'm hoping uh, escape is back. In the login, your domain? Good question. How do I log in to or make Nano Server do a domain join? Uh, you can do domain join through unattend.xml in offline. Once the machine is running, domain join is was not working last time I checked it or it can work it's very complicated so <laughs> you have to
copy some blob from here and there and all those things. It, uh, with that uh, tool on the image, on, you have like, when you set up the nano, you fix that. You, you just add the parameter domain Domain right. So that is uh, right. So that is when you are doing offline, right? Yeah. So when you are creating the image, you can join. Do the online uh, domain join is kind of difficult. <laughs> it's possible, but not what we want to. Questions on the UI, nice and beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, that was the only reason I carried so much stuff around um, <laughs> to show you this guy. And that's the difference, right? Jeffrey will never show you all this thing. I show you image. I show you life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's pretty much what I have. Uh, Where's the blue color? Good question. They had to refactor. Blacks in the view. Blue. We are done. They were just. Yeah, Morgo is done. I'm just. Done, done. Okay. Yeah, I pushed the button. So yeah, I think that's pretty much what I have. Um, any questions?